Did you know that El Greco was born in the Greek island of Crete and his real name was Dominikos Theotokopoulos? It was during his time in Spain that the artist became famous, and this is the reason that people refer to him as a Spanish painter. Through his mannerist style, he sought to look deeper into a psychological understanding of religious and mythological themes. On this episode of History of Renaissance, we will discuss El Greco, the leading figure of the Spanish rebirth in arts, who combined many techniques to eventually develop his own unique style and become one of the most acclaimed artists during the European Renaissance. Before we begin, subscribe to our channel so you can watch more episodes about your favorite artists and hit that notification button. Are you ready? Dominikos was born in 1541 in the village of Candia, modern-day Heraklion. He descended from a prosperous family of merchants from Hania. His family is said to have fled Hania during an uprising against the Venetians between 1526 and 1528. During Dominikos' early life, Red was the leading center of post-Byzantine art. He received his initial training in the Cretan school as an icon painter and studied the classics of ancient Greek texts in addition to Latin literature. During the 16th century, Candia was very popular for its artistic activity. Eastern and Western cultures coexisted in harmony. It is said that around 200 active artists existed in the town and had created the Painter's Guild based on the Italian model. In 1563, Dominicus was described in an official document as Master, Maestro Domenico, that is, which means that he must have been already a master of the guild and most probably was operating his own workshop. Three years later, in a contract on June 1566, he signed as Master Menego Theotokopoulos, painter, as a witness. Most scholars agree that Theotokopoulos' family were Greek Orthodox, but shortly after his arrival in Spain, Domenicos transferred to Catholicism and practiced as a Catholic, eventually describing himself as a devoted Catholic in his will. Between 1560 and 1565, Domenicos went to Venice to study and found himself under the tutelage of Titian, who was considered one of the best during that time. Titian was around his 80s by that time, but still very active. He had a big studio where he trained aspiring artists. Dominicos must have worked in that studio. Under Titian, El Greco began mastering the fundamental aspects of Renaissance painting, perspective, constructing figures, and staging detailed narrative scenes. A very good example of his work during this time is the miracle of Christ healing the blind. We know by letters that he sent to his friend, the Croatian Giulio Clovio, that Theotokopoulos lived in Venice until 1570. Clovio described Theotokopoulos as a rare talent in painting. Influenced by his Venetian training, El Greco arrived in Rome around 1570. There, on the recommendation of Giulio Clovio, El Greco was received as a guest at the Palazzo Farnese, which Cardinal Alessandro Farnese had made a center of the artistic and intellectual life of the city. Among the artists and individuals that he met, Dominicos became close friend of Roman scholar Fulvio Orsini, whose collection later on would include seven paintings made by the artist. The most popular among them are View of Mount Sinai and the Portrait of Clovia. Unlike other artists of his time, El Greco altered his style frequently and liked to invent new and unusual interpretations of traditional religious subject matter. His works painted in Italy were influenced by the Venetian Renaissance style of the period with agile, elongated figures reminiscent of Tito Reto and the chromatic framework that connects him to Titian. He also learned to organize his multi-figure compositions in landscape vibrant with atmospheric light. His paintings became enriched with elements such as violent perspective vanishing points or strange attitudes struck by the figures with their repeated twisting and turning and intense gestures, all elements of mannerism. By the time El Greco arrived in Rome, the works of Michelangelo and Raphael were still of great influence on younger painters, even though they were both dead. El Greco, however, was determined to leave his own mark and to defend his artistic views and style. A story says that he did not hesitate to dismiss Michelangelo's last judgment in the Sistine Chapel, and he extended an offer to Pope Pius V to paint over the whole work 
in accord with the new and stricter Catholic thinking. When he was later asked what he thought about Michelangelo, El Greco replied that he was a good man, but he did not know how to paint. Ironically, later during his life, he found it very hard to escape the influence of Michelangelo and Raphael. Michelangelo's influence can be seen in later El Greco works, such as the Allegory of the Holy League. Eventually, he admitted that Michelangelo and Raphael were great role models to follow. In his 17th century chronicles, Giulio Mancini included El Greco among the painters who had initiated in various ways a re-evaluation of Michelangelo's teachings. However, his earlier claims damaged his reputation in Rome and some even called him a foolish foreigner. Farnese even chased him away from his palace. On July 6, 1572, El Greco officially complained about this event. Finding it hard to stay in Italy, Dominicos emigrated to Madrid in 1577. After a short time he spent in Madrid, he moved to Toledo. During the 1570s, a huge monastery palace of El Escorial was still under construction, but Philip II of Spain couldn't find talented artists to decorate. Titian was dead, and in Toretto, Veronese and Antonis Mor all refused to come to Spain. The king was forced to employ less important artists for the demanding job. One of them was Juan Fernandez de Navarrete, whose gravedad y decoro was approved. However, the artist died in 1579, and the moment was ideal for El Greco. Through his connections, he met Luis de Castilla, a clergyman and son of Diego de Castilla, the dean of the Cathedral of Toledo. El Greco secured his first large commissions through Castilla. He arrived in Toledo by July 1577, and by September 1579, he had completed nine paintings for the Santa Domingo, including the Trinity and the Assumption of the Virgin. These works would establish the painter's reputation in Toledo. El Greco's aim was to win the trust and favor of Philip and leave his mark in his court. Indeed, he managed to get two commissions from the monarch. Those were for Allegory of the Holy League and Martyrdom of Saint Maurice. However, for unclear reasons, the king did not like the works and gave no further sponsorship to the painter. Many suggest that because Philip had very fixed taste and he was thoroughly interested in works that he commissioned. Some scholars suggest that Philip did not like the presence of living persons in a religious scene. Some others that El Greco's works violated a basic rule of the Counter-Reformation, namely that in the image the content was dominant rather than the style. There is even proof that Philip II exiled several artists because he was dissatisfied with their work. Anyway, his strange character and patronage ended Domenico's hope for a royal sponsorship. Even under these circumstances, El Greco decided to stay in Toledo and work there. In 1585, he hired an assistant, Italian painter Francisco Reboste, and had established a workshop which produced altarpieces, statues, and paintings. On March 12, 1586, he obtained the commission for what is now his most famous work, the burial of the Count of Orgaz. The following years, up to the early 1600s, were very busy years for the artist. During these years, his workshop received commissions from various religious institutions. His works during that period include three altars for the Chapel of San Jose in Toledo, three paintings for the Colegio de Dona Maria de Aragón, an Augustinian monastery in Madrid, and the high altar, four side altars, and the painting Saint Ildefonso for the Capilla Mayor of the Hospital de la Caridad at Iliescos. Notes, which were composed by the personnel of the municipality during the same period, describe El Greco as one of the greatest men in both this kingdom and outside it. As it was natural, El Greco made Toledo his home. Surviving contracts mention him as a tenant from 1585 onwards of a complex consisting of three apartments and 24 rooms, which belonged to the Marquet de Villena. It was in these apartments, which also served as his workshop, that he passed the rest of his life painting and studying. Jerónima de la Cuevas, with whom he had a relationship, gave him his only son. Jorge Manuel, born in 1578, who also became a painter, assisted his father and continued to repeat his compositions for many years after he inherited the studio. In 1604, Jorge Manuel and Alfonso 
de los Morales gave birth to El Greco's grandson, Gabriel, who was baptized by Gregorio Angulo, governor of Toledo and a personal friend of the artist. El Greco fell seriously ill during a commission for the Hospital Tavera, and a month later, on April 7, 1614, he died. Two Greeks, friends of the painter, witnessed his last will and testament. He was buried in the church of Santo Domingo el Antigua. Thank you for watching this episode. If you want to hear the stories of other important artists and art movements, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification button. Until next time.